Hi, and welcome to my channel, Naughty Gnome Crafts. My name is Sarah, and you can find me as Naughty Gnome on Instagram. If this is your first time viewing my channel, thank you so much for checking it out. And if you're coming back, thank you so much for returning. I really appreciate your support. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a dual review of the Megan Nielsen Ash jeans and the Megan Nielsen Dawn shorts. I made both of these in June and I decided to do a companion review of the two of them together because I thought it might be helpful to kind of compare the two patterns, see what the differences are, see what the similarities are, and it might help you make your decision on which pattern that you might want to make or if you want to make both. Before we get started, I just want to give a quick note that for this particular review and in all of my future pants pattern reviews, I am going to give you the adjustments that I made and let you know what kinds of adjustments that I made and whether I did a lot or a little, but I'm not going to read off specific numbers. And that's because I think it gets really boring if I'm just telling you I scooped 3 eighths inch here, I added half an inch there. It doesn't really mean anything if I'm telling you that. And also because every body is just so individual that even if we were the same height and had the same measurements, we probably wouldn't need the exact same adjustments. So I don't even know how helpful it is for me to tell you exactly exactly the adjustments that I made to fit my body, unless you're my uh, long lost twin out there somewhere that I don't know about. So let's just get started and talk about the basic pattern descriptions. So the Megan Nielsen Ash jeans says, it's the ultimate stretch jean pattern set. Includes four cuts and multiple lengths for tall, regular, and cropped. Pattern features a comfortable rise, close fit through the waist and hips, and classic jeans details. View A is a modern slim leg jean, view B is a skinny jean, view C is a flare jean, and view D is a wide leg jean. And the version that I made was view C, which is the flare leg jean. The Dawn pattern says that it's a classic high-waisted rigid jean pattern set, includes four cuts and multiple lengths for tall, regular, and cropped. Pattern features a high rise to sit on the natural waist, button fly, close fit through the waist and hips, and classic jeans details. View A is a tapered leg jean, view B is a straight leg jean, view C is a wide leg jean, view D is a jean short. So I made the view D, which is the jean short. The sizing on both of these patterns goes from 0 to 30, and there are two different ranges. So there's a smaller size band and then there's a curved size band. For the Dawn, I made size 4 at the waist and graded to a 2 at the hip. For the Ash, I made a size 6 at the waist and graded to a 4 at the hip. And then I made the flare leg, as I said, and I did the regular length, but I did shorten it, and I will explain why in a moment. The fabric that I used for the Dawn jeans is a 12 ounce non-stretch denim that I got from Joann Fabrics, and I used one yard. For the Ash jeans, I used one and a half yards of stretch denim that I got from Threadbare Fabrics. I bought this fabric quite a few years ago, probably back in 2018. And so therefore, I don't have all the details of this. It's definitely a lighter weight than the ones that I use for the Dawn. I'm going to guess it's probably around an 8 or 9 ounce denim. And the stretch percentage was about 15%, but I don't know the exact fabric content or the manufacturer. The instructions for both of these patterns were really great. They have very clear diagrams, clear explanations. They are slightly unusual in that the very first step is to construct the fly front. Now I know that that might be intimidating to some people, but I actually liked it because you sort of get the hard part out of the way right away and then the rest is pretty smooth sailing. I pretty much follow the instructions, but I did do a few things a little bit differently. I kind of changed the order of some things, and I might have um, switched things up a little bit just based on my own experience, but I'll get into some of those details as we go. Now let's talk about alterations. I did have to make pretty extensive alterations for both pairs of pants, but that's not uncommon for me. I have basically never been able to make a pair of pants right out of the packet and have it actually fit. So for the Dawn shorts, I added some extra width but to both of the front crotch point and the back crotch point to make more room for my thighs. On the Dons, I had to reduce the rise of both the front and the back because I found it was just too high for my body shape. And I actually had to shorten the back rise quite a bit, and so I ended up taking out some of the length, not just from the pant itself, but also from the yoke. So the yoke on the Dons that I did is a little bit shorter than the original pattern piece, and I did that just so that I wouldn't have such a drastic um, reduction in length and out of the pants back only, and then like the yoke might look a little bit weird. I did it out of both in order to keep it sort of proportional. 
On the Dawn shorts, I also flat pattern measured the thigh and I thought it was gonna be too tight for my thighs because my thighs are proportionally larger to my hips. So I graded out on the side seams and the inseams to give more room for my legs, but I actually did it a little bit too much and I had to go back in and correct that later. Now my adjustments for the ass strings were a little bit different. I did have to add to the front crotch point to make room for my thigh, but I left the back crotch alone. I shortened the back rise on the ash, but I actually added to the front rise. The ash jeans are meant to sit quite a bit lower than the dons, and I actually prefer the height of the dons, but on this, this particular pair of ash jeans, I didn't take them all the way up to my natural waist. They're probably about an inch below my natural waist, um, but even so, I still ended up having to add to the front rise in order to get that to sit on my body correctly, and I still had to shorten the back rise. On the ash, I also ended up scooping the back crotch curve just a small amount, and actually I ended up having to do that on the dons as well, but I did it after the fact, which I will get to that later. For the ash jeans, because I find it very, very difficult to do a muslin for jeans because it really just depends on what your denim is like. It, every fit is gonna be different according to how much stretch you have in your fabric. So rather than doing a muslin, I did a based fit. So when, after doing the based fit, I decided that the jeans were a little bit too tight in the thighs. And so I let the seams out a little bit on both the side seams and the inseams to give my more room for my thighs. Now let's talk about some design changes. For both patterns, I actually did faux flat felled seams. My sewing machine just isn't heavy duty enough to handle doing real flat felled seams with the thickness of the fabric that I was using. So what I mean by faux flat felled seams is that I did serge the side of the seam that was going to be on top, and then the one that's gonna be underneath and hidden, I trimmed that one down to, so that to, in order to reduce bulk. Then I would press it, so that the serge part was on top and then I top stitched. So it's similar to a real flat felt seam, it's just you don't tuck the seam allowance under and so it's not as bulky. And I really like the way that that turned out. I found that trimming my seams really cut down on the bulk and it made it a lot easier for my sewing machine to handle the thickness. So I would, re I would highly recommend doing that if you were making jeans um, not just to press the seam allowances to the side and top stitch, but to actually trim one of them in order to make it a little thinner. For both patterns, I also did an alternate waistband construction. There's a tutorial on the Closet Core blog, I believe it's for their ginger jeans, where they talk about a different type of waistband construction that instead of stitching the top part of the waistband first and then you fold the inside under and stitch it down, I find it really, really difficult to catch the inside waistband like all the way around cleanly. So what I did instead, and I will link the tutorial in the description box, is that I actually applied the waistband Waistband seams to the bottom first, and then you actually fold the seam allowances under on the tops of the waistband, and then you top stitch it down. So it just makes it so that the inside of your jeans has a really, really nice clean finish. The seam has actually already been stitched, so there's no concern about missing any of your seam allowance and having that poke out and having to go back in and fix it. It's all just really, really clean, and because you've pressed the top, it's nice and straight and you can just top stitch it down and you're done. I find that construction so much easier with a much cleaner finish and so I do plan to use that method for all of the jeans that I make in the future. The last design change that I did for both patterns is that I did add a back pocket design. Uh, Closet Core has a free download with like 30 different pocket designs and I use designs from that template in order to decorate my pockets. I have to say that like conventionally, I'm not a decorative pocket person, like it's not really my thing, but I decided to go ahead and do it on both of these pairs because I think that actually adding a design to the back of your pockets makes it feel a little bit more uh, ready to wear. It feels less homemade, I guess. And so that's when I, why I went ahead and did those pocket designs. Um, this kind of is reminiscent for, to me of classic Levi's. And then because these are black, you're probably not gonna be able to see them. But on this one, I just did a little swirl design. I'll try to take a photograph that shows it more clearly and insert it so you can actually see what it looks like. But I did add those pocket designs. I also moved the pockets around a little bit to fit my body shape a little bit better, which means that I did not apply the pockets exactly when the instructions told you to. I waited until I could try it on and then place them where I wanted them. So the order construction was a little bit different from what the instructions said to do. Now I made the dons first and when I put them on, I realized that there was quite a lot of gapping in the back waist. 
Now this is not a problem that I traditionally have with sewing patterns. I have had that problem with ready to wear jeans, but I did find it a little bit strange that I had such a huge gap in the back of my waistband. So because I had already basically constructed these, um, I needed a fix for it. I couldn't really go back and do it in the design stage. I didn't have enough fabric to cut a new waistband. So I found a tutorial on the Melt Stitches blog, and I will link that down in the description box, where um, she tells you how to add elastic in between the two outer belt loops. And that just helps to cinch in that waist and hold it closer to your body. And I'm really glad that I did this because the fit is much, much better on these. And because these are a non-stretch denim, I think that the gapping waistband would have been a problem um, forever if I had not done the elastic fix. So um, I would change the pattern next time to bring in that back waist and the yoke a little bit to eliminate the gap. But for now, I think that the elastic was a really good intermediate solution where I could save these shorts and still be able to wear them. Now for the ash jeans, I also had a problem with gapping in the back waist, but it was not nearly as prominent as the Dons were. And I think because this is stretched denim, when I put the jeans on initially, it seems like there's a pretty big gap in the back, but once I wear them for about an hour or so, it actually kind of stretches out and kind of conforms to the curve of my back without my having to do anything. So I didn't do a fix on this one, but I still would go back to the pattern before I make these again and do a little bit of an adjustment to the waistband in order to bring it in to eliminate that gap. But I would not have to make nearly as big of an adjustment on this pair as I would have to make on the Dawn's. Now for the Dawn jeans, I did find that I had more fit issues with this pair than I did with the Ash. So after I completed them and I wore them for a day, there were definitely some things about it that I wasn't happy with. Number one, they gave me a wedgie in the back. I think that I needed to go in and scoop the back crotch a little bit like I did on the Ash, but I didn't do that. So I did find that it was a little bit uncomfortable in the back. And then the other thing is because I had um, added the width at the bottom of the legs, to make them wider, I did it way too much. And so they were kind of baggy and there was extra fabric like um, underneath the back crotch. It looked really unattractive. It was pretty uncomfortable. So I did actually end up going back to these and I did some post making adjustments. So I ripped out the top stitching on part of the seam here. I did go ahead and scoop out the back uh, crotch curve a little bit to give me a little bit more space and then I with my sewing machine I tapered the seams on the side seam and also the inseam in order to um, Bring those in a little bit so it's a little bit closer to my thighs and although that fix wasn't perfect These do fit me a lot better now And I definitely think that I'll get more wear out of them than I would have if I had not fixed them And of course I need to go back to the original pattern and make those adjustments so that I don't make that mistake again So because I made the shorts for the dawn I can't really obviously speak Speak to the legs and how they fit, but I would make the Dawn jeans again. I definitely need to go back in and make those pattern adjustments and make sure the, the primary thing is to fix that gapping in the back waist because it was a significant issue for me. The ash jeans for me need a little bit less work. I do still need to um, narrow that back waistband, but just a little bit. I did actually find that although I let the thighs out after the basting stage, that I think I really probably didn't need to do that because it's a stretch denim. When I put the jeans on right after washing them, they feel very, very comfortable. But you know like when you wear jeans and they kind of stretch out over the course of the day, by the end of the day, they actually feel slightly baggy. So I think if I actually would have just stuck with the original fit of the jean, that ultimately it would have been better to do that. So it's very dependent on like the stretchiness of my fabric, but I do think that I can kind of play it by ear, maybe make them slightly tighter next time just so they don't feel like they're too baggy. Um, after wearing them for a few hours. The other thing that I need to do for the ash is I need to make some corrections to the leg length. So I told you in the beginning that I used the regular length, but I did shorten it. And because they're a flare leg, I wanted to try and get the leg length correct as, as close as I could from the beginning. Normally when I make pants, I actually make them just a little bit too long, and just in case I need to make some adjustments as I go. But for these, because it has a flare, I wanted to get it accurate as I could from the beginning because when you start cutting it off from the bottom, you reduce the flare. 
So I tried to get it right, but I actually miscalculated and I ended up making my pants too short. So these pants, um, the Ash jeans have a raw hem, but that was actually not intentional. I wanted them to be like a regular hemmed pant, but they were just too short. When I put them on with shoes, I can wear them with flat shoes without a hem and like they're pretty much okay, but ideally I would actually be wearing these pants with heels and they're too short for that. So I definitely need to go back to the pattern and lengthen the legs a little bit. I probably would lengthen them um, fairly significantly, probably like two inches, just to give myself the extra length to make sure that I can do a hem and that they graze the floor when I'm wearing heels. So although neither of these patterns turned out perfect for me, I think that they are both a really excellent starting point and I would definitely make them again. I really like how clear the instructions are to follow and I found them to be a nice, well-drafted pattern. And because I've already gotten a good start on getting those fitting adjustments made, I just need to make a few more and I think that I'll be pretty close, maybe on my second or third pairs, to have that well-fitting jean that I'm really craving. So let me know in the comments whether you have sewn either of these patterns and whether you like one over the other. I really like them both. I think that they both have a place in my wardrobe because sometimes I like to wear the non-stretch rigid denim and sometimes I like the stretch. It just depends. If you enjoyed this review, I would really love it if you would give me a thumbs up because it helps more people find my channel. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support and I will see you again next time.